Hey everybody, welcome to How To Tuesday. I just asked some people on Instagram, did a little Instagram live, asked them if they had some questions, and you gave me some good ones. One that I really liked was, how do you catch big snappers offshore? Okay. Um, I would say that I was not an expert at this, and probably still definitely not an expert at this, but I have been around some experts, and uh, when we're filming Into the Blue... I have the opportunity to fish with Scott Walker and Steve Roger. Steve Roger in particular is very, very good at catching these these big snappers, whether that's gray snappers or muttons or um, even the big yellowtail. Um, lots of big snappers around the Key West area, and the guides down there have it dialed in. They've got it dialed in. And... Uh, so there's a couple of common themes, and, and you know, I'm an inshore guy uh, that goes out offshore with those guys. I go offshore on my own. I'll fish for big snappers um, against the mangroves. I'll fish for them uh, on structure, uh, inshore wrecks, near shore wrecks, reef areas, stuff like that. And so a lot of this will apply to all these different areas uh, in various forms. So. There, there are a couple of common things that I see that the best do consistently. And one is to really pay attention to the chum. Okay, you're going to go offshore, you're going to need a lot of chum. And, you know, where a lot of the inshore guys that I fish with might take a box or two, these guys are taking a case, case of chum. And this is, you know, particularly for yellow tailing or... Uh, where you're going to start yellow tailing, but the, almost always when uh, these guys are going yellow tailing, they are also going to have a bottom rod down. Okay. <clears throat> so if you're going to be yellow tailing or you're going to fish for muttons, it's going to start off with a lot of chum. And they're going to have a commercial chum bag, which is something that was kind of invented, I guess. Uh, the first time I saw it was in, in Key West. It's made out of old shrimp net and then at the top is almost like the size of a hula hoop it was a piece of hose with a rope going through it um very big you're not messing around with any of these little uh chum bags like you buy at the at the tackle shop those are great for some things but when you're going to be chumming like this this has a very large opening that is uh, on a heavy duty rope and you're going to tie this to where it's going to be just above the surface of the water, the wave the wave activity is going to be really uh, dispersing this chum really fast, and that's really the reason that they're um, using so much chum is because it, it's going out of this old shrimp net so fast. Um, so they're going to they're going to start off with you know a five pound uh, or, or bigger block of chum. I mean, it's really like like four or five of the of the small blocks that you get out of the freezer all put together into one. They're throwing one of those in there, and uh, it saves on a lot of cardboard. It saves on a lot of trash, and you've got one big block of chum in this thing. So immediately, you're going to start seeing all kinds of stuff come up to that chum bag, including sometimes some decent snappers. So these guys haven't even begun to think about fishing yet. They've gotten to their spot, they've put their chum out, and it's going to be a while before they fish. It's all about building. For the larger fish, it's all about building. And this chum that is at the boat hasn't even gotten back to where the big fish are likely to be caught. As this starts to build, you're going to see the yellowtail build behind the boat. You're going to see the gray snappers coming up. You're going to see all kinds of stuff start start happening. They're going to get more and more comfortable. More and more chum is getting past them. If we uh, typically are going out there also with a live well full of pilchards and live chumming those, maybe taking any of the dead ones, chopping them in half with a pair of scissors and trickling them back as well. The If you were to be even on an inshore 
nearshore reef or wreck or wherever you're you're trying to catch snappers and you go out there with some jig heads and some shrimp, which snappers love to eat that, the little ones are going to get you. They're going to get you so fast that if you really want to catch the larger snappers, you're going to need to use a larger bait. And that could be a jig head and a full-size pilchard for gray snappers, or it could be you know, a, a plug of ballyhoo where you cut the tail off, um, cut the head off, cut the tail off. you got a big piece of ballyhoo that you're going to drop down. Now, what I've seen is when the fishing's really good, the big snappers will come up right underneath the boat and they'll, they'll be right there and you can drop a rod straight down and you can, you can have a chance of catching something pretty big. But more often than not, what these guys will do is um, fish way behind the boat, like cast as far as they can behind the boat and let that go down to the bottom. And uh, that is a very good technique in the shallower water to cast way back behind the boat and then let it drop and then just let it sit there. And, um, you know, things are, big fish are coming in because they smell this chum. And if you've been there for an hour, two hours, and you're chumming heavy, you're reaching fish that you can't even imagine that you're reaching. And if you're in, say, 100, 100 feet of water, 200 feet of water, this chum that is going out, the fish that are right behind the boat, they're not getting it all. And it is just trickling down and is, it is you know forming kind of a line of chum and it takes a long time for that stuff to hit the bottom, like a long time. Um, we'll also use sandballs and chum to get the fish right, you know, a little closer to the boat to where you mix sand and thawed out chum together. And you will drop these balls that will disintegrate on their way down. So now you're not just chumming across the top of the water and having that slowly sink you are actually now dropping this ball down to the bottom and it is it is disintegrating as it goes all the way down. So now you're chumming vertically, not just horizontally. You're chumming vertically and that's a really good way to do it. You can also hide your bait in one of those um, sand chum balls and have it go all the way down to the bottom and then just start to disintegrate uh, over time. Um, people sometimes will hide a live pilchard in that because there's no way that you're going to get a live pilchard through this this frenzy of fish that's right behind the boat. So they hide a live pilchard in this sandball mix and drop that straight to the bottom. It can make it down there uh, and then you kind of give it a little tug and you can have a live fish on the bottom that has made it through this cloud of, of voracious fish. Another technique that, that I see happen when the fishing gets a little tougher is to go with a small hook, weightless, and, you know, something a little larger than what the fish immediately behind the boat are, are eating, and just start paying that out. And now you're trying to mimic what the real chum is doing. It is, it, you're chumming horizontally. But it's slowly, slowly, slowly going down. So it may take, you know, a hundred yards for that bait on that little hook or on that little tiny jig head to get down to the bottom. But you're paying out and paying out and paying out. And at this point, you're not going to feel anything, really. You're going to be paying the line out. And this takes a little bit of skill to kind of get used to this. But you're paying the line out. And then it just starts to accelerate a little faster than than what you were doing. And that's a bite. That's a fish that has that. Or it will stop and it won't go out. And that either means that it's hit the bottom or something's got it in its mouth. And, uh, you know, you feel like you've got a bite. You reel in real fast and either something's there or it's not. But it takes a little bit to, to get good at sensing this bite on the drop back. And it also takes a little bit to kind of get comfortable with how far you should let it go back there. And really, it is uh, um, way back there. 
depending on the tide and the current. And in fact, you may not even be able to get it to the bottom unless you use a small jig head or a weight of some sort. So the big fish are going to come on bigger baits, either directly under the, under the boat because you've chummed them there with sandballs or way, way, way back behind the boat. So in order to catch the bigger ones, pay attention to your chum. Go out there with a commercial chum bag and a lot of chum. Have live pilchards or live baits, whatever, whatever is available in your area. And then be ready to not only fish directly under the boat, but to be ready to fish way, way back behind the boat. And I think that you will definitely start to catch some bigger ones like that. And uh, I, I know that it's worked really well for the guys for Into the Blue. And uh, I've learned a thing or two each time. But again, the, the common theme is letting everything build. You are building this spot. You're not just going out there and just, just happen to be landing on the best snapper spot. You're bringing those snappers to you, as well as the grouper and the goliath grouper and the barracudas and everything else. You're going out there to a place that has live bottom, and you are building this spot. So then once you get it built, once you start catching some fish, these fish are throwing stuff up. They're putting off a signature of, uh, of something feeding and other fish start to come in. If you can be patient enough to let this all build and then pay something way back there, you'll see that there are some bigger snappers available right there, whether it's a little eight foot channel or if it's 200 feet out there on the reef, um, check it out all right i hope that helps if you do catch one of these bigger snappers post it up on instagram tag me um or send me a dm tom underscore roland i'd love to see it see how this podcast helps you to catch more fish all right see you